Do you know what these are? Of course you do. They're dice. They're some of the most common gaming objects found anywhere, and chances are you've probably got some in your house right now. Now what about this one? This one's a little less common. It's also a die, but it's got 20 sides to it. And if you've ever been around one, you've probably been convinced that it's got some sort of magic power, because everybody around you started talking in a bizarre language that you've never heard. You probably caught a couple of words here and there, but you really have no idea what's going on, even though everybody else seems to. Are you lost and confused? Well, you've come to the right place. I'm Mr. Valiant, and this is your guide to tabletop role-playing games. Now, before I get too complicated, let's talk about what a tabletop RPG is. Do you remember when you were kids, and you used to play games that were all in your imagination, and you just kind of made them up as you went? That's kind of what a tabletop RPG is. Except now, there are rules and dice to govern when your bullet actually hits somebody, and you can declare they are, in fact, dead, and you can't argue. Another way to think of them is a little bit like a play, where everybody at the table is playing a character. You are not your character, and your character is not you. You're assuming a role. That's the first word in RPG. Now, whenever I tell people about RPGs, one of the first questions I always get is, how do you win? Well, it's not really that kind of game. Like a play, you're doing this to tell a story, and like those games that you played when you were a kid, these can go on for as long as they need to to get the story told. The only real difference is that there's pretty much one person in charge of the whole thing. It's usually referred to as the Game Master, or GM, and everybody else is playing the story that he has written, and you all are characters in it. Think of him kind of like a director, or an author. He's orchestrating events that you all are going to have to react to. He's the one who's designing the dungeons that you go into. He's the one that's creating the monsters. He's the one that is setting up the puzzles for you to solve. It is his responsibility to see that everybody participates and everybody's having a good time. And it is an enormous responsibility. If you've got about five minutes on your hands, run an internet search for Eric and the Angry Gazebo. It's a short little story about what happens when one of the players in a game gets really confused about what the GM is trying to describe and accomplish. This is the kind of stuff that a GM has to deal with on a nightly basis. They have to be incredibly quick thinking and be able to deal with situations like this all the time. Another good example is the D&D reenactment by the Dead Alewives. There are tons of internet videos that have been done to this little audio recording. Yeah, it's meant to be a parody, but like all good parodies, there's an element of truth here. And by element, I mean most of it. Unfortunately, this is a pretty good idea of what a typical game night is like. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, but I don't have to point out the increasing frustrations of the GM. So, for obvious reasons, I'm not going to recommend that you actually try and run one of these games right off the bat. But if you're interested in this kind of stuff, ask around. Somebody in your group of friends is either running one of these games right now or knows somebody who does. And if not, then you've got the internet too. Places like RPG.net are dedicated to finding groups of players just for these kinds of games. Now all you really need to do is pick a kind of game that you're interested in playing. Pick a genre of movie. There's a game for it. You like stuff with ghosts and vampires and werewolves? They've got you covered. You like superheroes? They've got that too. But the more you get into this, the more you're going to hear one name crop up more times than any other. I'm talking the granddaddy of them all. Dungeons and Dragons. Oh yeah. D&D's gotten a really bad rap over the years. Most of it comes from dumb movies and hilariously uninformed press like the Chick Tracks, but some of it is self-inflicted too. It has a lot of expensive rulebooks and special dice that you have to buy just to be able to play the game, and this isn't necessarily something that newcomers want to do. It's arguably the very first tabletop RPG and is thus the most popular, but it also has a long history of being downright cruel to its players. Fortunately, the most recent 4th edition that's available right now has streamlined many of the more complex rules and is much more friendly. The publisher, Wizards of the Coast, also offers relatively inexpensive starter kits, which include the special dice and a quick start version of the rules to help you get into the game as fast as possible. There are two main drawbacks to D&D. First, it's based on the swords and sorcery genre, and it's very good at it, but it's not everybody's flacken of mead. 
And secondly, the game's engine, or the way you advance your character, is based around combat rather than character development or good storytelling. That's not to say that you can't add these into a D&D campaign, but that's not what the main focus is. For that kind of thing, you could do a whole lot worse than The World of Darkness by White Wolf. These are urban horror and built around interacting with, or even, if you get some of the other books, playing as things like werewolves and vampires. Or if you're strapped for cash, run a search for the Nemesis system. It's pretty similar and uses dice rolls in one of the most unique ways I've ever seen. The rules might be a little complicated for a beginner, but it's free. The only thing you'll have to buy is a set of 10-sided dice, and you can get these for about 6 bucks at any gaming store. My advice is just to shop around. Pick a genre and start from there. Another thing you need to be looking at is how complex the rules are. There are a lot of games out there that have long mathematical formulas and very dense character sheets that you'll need to fill out. And these games can be a lot of fun, but for a beginner, they can be pretty overwhelming. I'd go with something a little simpler. And I can hear what you're all thinking. What game would I recommend? I would recommend one that focuses a bit more on presentation and story and everybody at the table just having a good time. And no matter what game I'm playing, that's more important to me anyway. And maybe one that isn't actually confined to one genre or another. I'm going to recommend one of these to you, and I'm going to do you one better and recommend one of these to you that costs you absolutely nothing. Head over to AtomicSockMonkey.com, yeah, I'm serious, and click on the freebies button. Download something called PDQ. PDQ actually stands for Prose Descriptive Quality, but obviously it's meant to make you think of pretty darn quick. That's what the whole game is based on. It's very quick and very easy to pick up, learn, and play, and its entire focus is just having a lot of fun. That's the whole point. These are games. They're supposed to be fun. If you get involved in one of these and it's not fun, ditch it and move on to something else. I hope I was helpful for you. And if you've got any questions, let me know. I'm Mr. Valiant. Happy nerding. <laughs> <laughs>